We move on to the next presentation, and that's by uh, Dr. Yatish uh, Ramena from uh, the US, Optimizing Co-Feeding Strategies for Enhanced Survival and Growth of uh, Penetrium Post Larvae. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Yatish, uh, Yatish Ramena. I would like to give a presentation on uh, um, different trials. These are not conducted in the same time. We have a different time points for the each, each trial. Um, this presentation is uh, based on a um, summary of five different trials conducted in different time points. So we have used um, Artemi as a co-feeding organism here. We co-feed for four trials. And the last trials, we have uh, actually um, replaced uh, particle diet with Artemia. So in my presentation, in my presentation, uh, I would like to uh, give you a clear uh, uh, information about these five trials. The first trial actually is uh, fo mainly focusing on hatchery trials. And uh, trial two is also hatchery trial, but we started at post larvae one to post larvae, uh, post larvae uh, 15. And uh, trial two actually got extended to even uh, post larvae 35. And trial three is a comparative study uh, between high nutrient dense fed, uh, fed post larvae versus uh, a budget friendly diet along with the different levels of artemia. And uh, trial four is also uh, fed with the different levels of artemia, but we tested with the heat shock protein. Sorry for this uh, um, uh, spelling mistake here, heat shock protein. And, and also, uh, we have conducted one trial, a feeding trial in Mexico. We would like to give you that translational research uh, on the feed, last trial. So as, as we all know, uh, Artemia is a, a model organism, especially very um, important uh, species, important uh, life food for many aquatic animals, especially when they were in larval and post-larval stage and post-venar diets. And also it helps to digest to enzymes for many fish and uh, shrimp species. But uh, we have all the information, but still we don't know. We have insufficient knowledge about what rate of artemia should be given, uh, given for a particular age of the shrimp, um, shrimp or fish. But here we are focusing on mostly uh, penis venami. Uh, for industry standard, we all know that it's uh, four to six cages uh, of artemia uh, producing for uh, more, uh, one million post larvae. But it always varies from uh, countries to countries and also from stages to another stage. This is the right time to evaluate, uh, the, evaluate the performance of Vaname at different dietary levels of artemia as a co-feed along with the micro uh, particular feeds. So in our experiment, we have first trial was conducted with the uh, NAPLE-4 to grown up to PL-15. Uh, in this trial, actually, we also harvested at the PL-8. Three tanks were harvested in the, during uh, PL-8. And uh, when you look at this feeding, uh, we have used uh, isonitrogenous and isocalic diets. Um, and also we have included a commercial, one of the best commercial diets as a reference diet. But these diets are uh, fixed diets, and, but what we changed here is artemia, different levels of artemia. We have used one kg artemia, no artemia, again one kg to compare with the commercial diet, along with the marine diets, and two, four, and it's kind of exponential inclusion rates in the trial number one. It is a, we tested actually stocking density is less than 50 NAPLE per liter. And trial number two was a little bit higher density, is a less than 100 post larvae per liter we have included here. Uh, when we look at this RTM inclusion rates are also different here. We started with a two kg and also one kg, again two kg com for comparison commercial diet and two, four, six, eight kgs were included in this, in this trial. Um, for the dependent variable, response variables are uh, mostly like survivals. We have uh, other data also to present here, but um, I'm not, uh, we don't have a time to present all the data for amino acid and fatty acid data here. We are, I'm going to only present the growth trial. 
Um, and also we have tested actually um, health indices uh, for post larvae when they attain age uh, PL8 onwards. Uh, mostly uh, those parameters are uh, age, size, muscle gut ratio, necrosis, falling, etc. And also we have tested uh, test test. So when you look at the uh, results from the trial one, this is a partial harvest. You can see here post larvae seven, we harvested here. We clearly see four kg fed tanks showed higher survival than any other tides. But it's supposed to be four, you see here 4.3 because we back calculated after, the, after their trial uh, based on the survival, that's what it showed actually 4.3. But when we continue to PL15 uh, stage, we see here, again, same trend followed even 15 up to PL15. And remaining comparison like a, a hand, uh, uh, growth on the other part, part of uh, health indices or did not show any significant difference here. And the trial number two, I compare with the trial number one and two here. We can see very clearly, four kg was showed here, but trial number two, so when we extended to PL15, it's a partial harvest in trial number two, but this trial number two is also extended to PL35. So here we see clearly six kg artemia was shown a higher survival than any other diets. So, but remaining um, parameters were not so significant. Uh, for example, like muscle gut ratios, um, other growth, other parameters, not, not significantly so different here. And this clearly suggesting us dietary levels of artemia, especially six kgs artemia was uh, a suggested uh, level of dosage for the optimal growth at the, during the hatchery stage. And as I mentioned before, this trial was continued to PL35. So we have included additional artemia as an inclusion date, different inclusion date for different, uh, different dietary treatments here. And when we, and also, I'm presenting another one here. I also already mentioned about the two different uh, diets, dietary treatments, uh, high density, nutrient density diets comparing with the budget friendly diet and also different levels of artemia here included here. So when we look at these results, see PL50 up to PL15, Six cages were good enough to show higher survival, but when we add, when we continue to up to PL35, so they obtained actually showed uh, this 18 cages actually showed better survival than any other diets. See here, uh, overall, we did not see any significant difference for the farming stress and other stress uh, stress. And, uh, but it's further improved actually, uh, this artemia inclusion rates highly impact on the survivals. So this is um, another, another trial, um, uh, this is comparing with the different uh, nutrient dense diet I mentioned before. Uh, this is a two-way ANOVA. We, we see here actually uh, so better survivals when we feed more, three kg more beyond hatchery, hatchery period, which uh, it is showed a significant higher improvement than the no artemia. This is, I'm talking about nursery stage here. And especially here, when you use a budget-friendly diet, it is actually showed pronounced effect here. Pronounced effect here. And, and also I would like to mention about this one, when we compare with uh, two uh, nutrient-dense diet, especially Mecca marine diet, it is uh, a, a few of the ingredients showed a pre-biotic uh, effect. Pre-biotic ingredients are included in the manufacturing of Mecca marine diet. So we would like to see, uh, is there any, any probiotic can continue with a minimal dose, sorry, with a minimal dosage of probiotic, how uh, this probiotic effect will continue until um, nursery stage. So for this trial, we actually included only one ppm of probiotic just before trial starting. And then um, we continued. We did not uh, given any other probiotics, only one dose, one ppm doses just before this trial. You can see that, uh, you can see very clearly um, the differences between the, those tanks. Of course, we did not see any significant difference and the effect 
uh, among any dietary treatments, especially for the gut microbiome. However, we did see a significant difference on the tanks where they receive Mekemerin MP diet when compared with the uh, economy diet. Uh, we have also conducted rare fraction analysis to see whether we uh, clearly did um, uh, sequencing or not. We also conducted uh, alpha diversity and beta diversity. But overall, we see uh, higher lactobacillus ab abundance were found in the tanks where they receive MP mechamerin diet. So this is actually our uh, fourth experiment. Uh, we try to see a stress. With, okay, uh, this experiment started with post larvae one to post larvae fifteen. It, this is also hatchery trial. In this trial, uh, we have included different levels of artemia along with the particle diet. The part, uh, the different levels were zero, two, four, six, uh, eight cases of artemia. We are in, uh, uh, induced. So we also induced uh, three different um, stress inducers here, the osmotic stress, transportation stress, and the formula stress. In this presentation, I'm going to give only uh, transportation stress. Um, but transportation stress, we have really uh, transported, actually transportation and storage stress. That means two hours we did transport with the vehicle and very bad road from Lone Oak to Pine Bluff. Uh, two hours of uh, uh, transportation, and then we kept uh, same um, packets in the car overnight with the engine with the engine turned on. So we use some vehicles for this experiment. So we can see the results here. So in our methodology, we would like to see because of stress, you know, survivals we did not see big difference. Uh, among any dietary treatments in our previous experiments. But this trial, we, want, we, would, we want to see any gene, a different gene expression, especially these heat shock proteins, which are uh, uh, markers, very uh, important markers for, for the uh, uh, stress resistant. So along with uh, heat shock proteins, we also assess other, other uh, genes here, uh, that are given here. And, and I want to talk about this EF1 alpha, sorry, EF1 alpha. This is actually our base marker for, his, uh, for to show a comparison. Okay, the results are very clear here. The tanks where they received higher amount of artemia as a co-feed showed, you know, higher resistant, higher stress resistant, and also elevated levels of, uh, levels of these heat shock proteins. But it's a very you know, clear data showing that uh, the, the relative, when we compare with our you know, base level, it showed relatively it's a higher expression, showed higher expression where, uh, where the tanks received higher amount of uh, Artemia as inclusion. Same results actually, this is actually is for 24 hours trial. We also connect with 18 hours and 12 hours. I don't have a data here to show, but we did not see a big difference in those uh, two different time points. But 24 hours, it showed very clear. Uh, higher uh, artemia fat tank showed, you know, elevated levels of these three genes, HSP 60, 70, and, and, and 90. So it is kind of uh, indicative of uh, um, stress resistant. So summary of my complete presentation here is, so when we use artemia, especially the six kg artemia was prominent and this showed higher survivals, especially hatchery, hatchery trials. And uh, if you, when we go to um, beyond hatchery trials, three kg artemia showed as higher survivals in, in, our, in our trials, all our trials. And uh, we did not see any uh, significant effect on health indices, like uh, maybe size, muscle gut ratio, necrosis, fouling. These, we did not show any significant difference, uh, you know, uh, affected by this art any artemia feeding. So, but we did see a different uh, uh, effect, um, significant effect on the heat shock proteins here, with, uh, you know, correlated with artemia inclusion rates. So what happened, you know, we already used this artemia until, you know, um, a hatchery stage and a nursery stage, but 
what is the translational effect if you continue this artemia? Uh, I mean, if you, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, what what will be the effect? You know, on the post larvae when we continue to the production trial. In the production trial, actually, we did see one. We conducted one production trial in Mexico. In this production trial, we have used four different treatments. In this production trial, actually, we replaced particle diet, not as a co-feed. So, uh, in, in the hatchery, hatchery trial, I'm talking about hatchery now. So there are four uh, different treatment diet treatments included in this trial, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% replacement completely. So these are eight rand, random major applications. And production trials, when you come to the production trial, they only stock with three diet treatments were included in the production trials. And then we can see the results here. See, in the hatchery, hatchery up to post larva five, they showed very clear difference and significantly improved survivals uh, when they, you know, uh, the tanks received 75% of uh, artemia and 100% of artemia. And also same trend was followed even for the weight gain also. And uh, they also conduct some uh, mortality rate stress, stress uh, thing. This is not a log rank analysis, it's a direct, uh, um, a direct uh, directly showing the percentage of mortalities here. Also, we can see very clearly higher fed tanks actually showed a slower mortality than the uh, lower rate uh, artemia included tanks. So what's going, what happened in the, you know, uh, when we stopped to indirectly to um, uh, grower trial? In the grower trial, actually, they connected three different diet treatments, as I mentioned before. Zero artemia, 50% artemia, and 75% artemia. The 75% artemia showed is better survival than in, than you know 0% and 50% artemia. It showed very clearly. You know, using this artemia, showed very clear results, and it is a translational research they conduct they conducted in Mexico. So replace. Remember, this is a replacement trial. So overall, our final thoughts here are. You know, if you want to use for artemia for higher survival, six cages are recommended as per our trials. And if you continue up to nursery stage, three more cages are required. And uh, preliminary field trial, that is actually a preliminary field trial, showed a better results, but still we need to do a, you know, additional trials to uh, assess more data. And also, um, we also should do additional research conducting on uh, uh, increased levels of pond production because we did not see um, uh, very clear results here, but we have to include a different levels of artemia for, uh, for production to pond production trials too. And also we should demonstrate in other dietary levels of artemia at different pond production systems. For example, intensive culture versus intensive versus uh, extensive and also PG-lined tanks versus non-PG-lined, something like that. We must do a lot of research. And also RAS versus stagnant pond cultures, like that. So this, thank you for this opportunity, and uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank, you thank you, Yatish. Uh, very, very interesting uh, new information, and uh, in fact, showing that um, where uh, in the history of, uh, well, in this case, uh, the shrimp farming, we have always been working with two separate business units, hatchery, nursery, selling to the grow out and the competition, and how can you make uh, the uh, PLs cheaper? So uh, uh, shedding light on uh, the fact that uh, it's not just the nutritional aspects of artemia that lead to proper growth and survival in uh, the, uh, the hatchery nursery, but that we need to look into, well, I call it immune parameters, immune uh, uh, competence of uh, the PLs. So uh, really interesting to uh, uh, pursue that work and uh, in fact compare, like you said at the end, uh, in uh, different systems. So uh, really uh, opportunities for further new work.